Next up, we have um, Deepak Sharma and Yusuf Zaini talking about developing secure and compliant application via IDE. I'll be going ahead and playing the recorded video. So I've included the link of the talk in the chat. You guys can go ahead and watch it there as well, but I'm gonna share the screen here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and play the video. If you have questions, keep asking them in the chat box. Hope you are doing great. Today we will take you to the journey of how you can develop secure and compliant applications via IDE. I'm Deepak Sharma, software engineer at Red Hat. Hello everybody, my name is Yusuf Zaini and I'm principal software engineer with Red Hat. And today we'll be taking you in a mission and our mission is to give a sense of security to the application developers. So we will be discussing mainly on four points uh, and each of the four points are the ones which a user usually faces a problem during his development life cycle. And we will be telling you as to what exactly or how this can be rectified or can be covered. So before getting into the details of those problems, let's try to understand what is a dependency or a package or a library or a module. In different ecosystems, we uh, use the different terminologies to, um, uh, to talk about the same thing actually. And what it, uh, what it actually is like when an application developer wants to reuse certain component or certain features which are already developed and which are available uh, in the market to, as a package or a library or a module, then that application developer adds that module or a package into his project and then he can reuse those functionalities which are already there so that uh, actually is what is a dependency or a package or a library or a module in different ecosystems uh, next slide so now let's get into the uh, problems which i was talking about so let's talk about the first problem so this problem we we call it problems of a plenty so in the graph on the right hand side, you can see uh, different ecosystems denoted across uh, different timelines. And uh, if, you, if you just see the NPM graph, uh, there you see that it is rising exponentially uh, in the last two or three years. What it means is that the number of packages available in the market for these ecosystems are humongous. So how does a developer know which package to choose from the ones which are available in the market? This is one of the problem. Next slide. The second problem is problem of security. Again, uh, we are representing it with via graph. And uh, if you ignore the what is in the left hand side and rather concentrate on what is on the right hand side, you see there will be a lot of tall buildings over there. And those tall buildings are actually uh, denoting the number of vulnerabilities that were reported in that particular year. So if you see the last two, three years, you will see that there are more than 40, 50,000 vulnerabilities that has been reported. So as a developer, when you have selected a particular package to be used in your um, development environment or in your project, how do you know whether that package is vulnerable or whether it is not vulnerable? This is the second problem. Next slide. The third problem is a problem of compliance. Now suppose that the user has selected the best uh, available package. He has selected a version which is not vulnerable at all. Now, as I said that in an application, you will be having a lot of such packages which you will be using. How does those package comply with each other? Because each of them will have its own licensing compliances. And then we have different versions of license, like whether it is permissive, weakly protective, strongly protective, network protective, and then there are different licenses under it. So whether those packages that you have added in your um, system are compliant with each other 
or there is any conflicts also like if you have so many packages uh, added in your project what is the overall uh, license of your uh, project so this is a third problem which uh, we want to discuss about next slide now the fourth problem which we would like to say is the problem of maintenance so again discussing on the packages and dependencies uh, how does a particular developer get to know that the package that he has used package or dependency how popular it is like how many other developers are using that particular package whether there is a uh, whether there is constant updates coming to that uh, particular package or dependency whether the issues which are being reported are actively looked upon whether they are resolved how many people like this how many people don't like how you how does a developer know about all these things this is the fourth problem so now let's uh, just summarize all those four problems in a nutshell the first one is how do developers choose the right dependency how do developers build an application without introducing any security vulnerability how do developers identify dependencies with the right licensing terms to be used and bundled as part of the application and the fourth how do developers select the right upstream dependency which is well maintained so what is the answer to these four questions we have an answer and that is in the dependency analytics this is a, a one short solution for all these four problems how does it uh, work let's get into the next slide so it has three different uh, like if you want to talk about architect uh, architecture there are three different aspects to it the one part is the offline part which is the data gathering and normalization of data the second part is using that data for uh, artificial intelligence uh, ml training retraining and the third is the presentation and integration like this is the third part is where the users come into picture the other two parts is something that we need to keep on doing in order to make sure that whatever we represent or we show to the user is correct and accurate next slide so let's get into a little bit of details about the data gathering and normalization part so there are two types of uh, data that we majorly gather one is the vulnerability information and the second is the package or version information so the vulnerability information there are two places from where we get this information one is like we curate our own vulnerabilities the second is we have a partnership with sneak right now from where we get this vulnerability information we process those vulnerabilities and then we update our graph database with all the vulnerability information the second thing that we have is an active upstream monitoring via this upstream monitoring we make sure that all the latest versions and all the packages which are released for the ecosystem like maven uh, npm and uh, python we have it in our system so we keep our system updated with all the packages and versions available so how we do it we have an upstream monitor which keeps on uh, getting these uh, feeds update feeds and then we have a worker processing and that worker processing actually uses the aws queues internally to and it has its own flows and tasks it does all those processing and then finally it's uh, it rests in the graph database so the package details the version details and the vulnerability details everything gets combined into one centralized case that is our graph database next slide now coming to the ai and ml part so now as i explained earlier that we have all the information present in our graph database so what do we do with that information one is like obviously giving the notifications to the user about the data or the things that we have about the vulnerability information and all those things the second part is give something extra to the user and that is where this ai and ml training or retraining comes into picture so we uh, we process whatever information we have and we have our own um, ai and ml uh, training we have our um, own we 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 have uh, we have come up with a different models uh, we tried retraining and then we decided on a particular model which suits best into our criteria and we use that to give the suggestions to the user 
uh, whenever we like uh, whenever we have a particular stack we give the suggestions about the different dependencies using our ai and ml and we also take the feedbacks from the user which we use it for retraining and we also keep an active track on what the users are using and use all this information again to retrain our models and give the best possible analytical analysis to the user we'll get into the details of this when we see the live demo yeah next slide and the third and final part is the presentation and integration so now we have all the data in place how do we present or uh, show it to the user so we have two different flows one is the lsp calls via the component analysis and one is the entire stack report so both these uh, both these uh, uh, flows fall into our api server and the api server internally uses our backbone services which actually talk to our graph database where i said the data is already present and then we have these recommendation engines which i discussed in the previous slide about the ai and ml part and along with that we have our own license compliance services running so it interacts with all these different services and then gets all the information together and then that collective information in the form of a stack report is uh, given back to the user next slide so let's talk about some numbers over here so we have more than six million nodes in our graph that is the packages and versions information on a on a day a monthly basis we have more than 150,000 active ingestion happening and uh, when uh, this is a uh, this is not a hard and fast statistics but this is an average that we have found that whatever uh, user stack that we analyze we have seen that on an average uh, use particular users user uses around 20 dependencies and uh, for our component analysis which is the lsp calls when when we are scanning the manifest file our response time is somewhere around one second most of the time it is lesser than one second we will show you the details how it works but anyway next slide now let's talk about the scalability part so all these uh, architecture and services that i talked about everything is broken down into simple microservices all of them running independently all of them are actually running on OpenShift, and uh, for all the internal processing like uh, queues for rds for uh, graph for s3 storage for all these things we uh, use uh, aws services so that we do not need to maintain any of these uh, things and it is always 100 percent available to us next slide now let's talk uh, briefly about the deployment and scaling <clears throat> so we pack all these information into container images and as i said like everything is deployed on open shift in as in the form of containers and um, the 100 percent availability that i was talking about on the aw side similarly we try to maintain that on our services as well uh, so their kubernetes and load balancing and auto scaling kicks in that helps us a lot where um, whichever services are being heavily used we can scale up when it is not used we can scale down and uh, make sure that it is always available for the users to use then we have a process where we do seamless testing so any changes which are uh, done to any of these services we have our regression tests we have our end-to-end -end tests running for each of the changes so that we make sure that everything is tested and it's up to date before it is sent to the production and to the user and last but not the least which i think most of you will be interested in is like everything is open source so now let's uh, have some live action and for this i will hand it over to my friend deepak over to you deepak thank you yusuf that's awesome so yusuf take you to the uh, theoretical journey so far so in the next part of our presentation i will take you over practical implementation how we do it to make this uh, to bring the solution more closer to you so in in this journey we integrated with your one of the favorite ides that is vs code we 
we wrapped our solution in one of the extensions in the VS Code and published it in the marketplace. So how to use this extension, I will take you quickly to the demo implementation. So as you can see in the VS Code Excel, downloading this uh, particular extension and then opening the manifest file uh, will bring you to our solution. So uh, in the dependency section itself, you can see Bootstrap, Libmap and Lodash are underlined as red. And hovering over that, will give you a sneak peek of why this underline is being done. So as you can see, Bootstrap version 4.1.1 has three known security vulnerabilities, which has a medium severity. Our solution recommend us to upgrade this version to 4.5.1. And we ensure you that upgrading to this version will make your stack get rid of this particular CVE. So similar to other two dependencies. So that's not all. If you want a comprehensive, more detailed analysis of your stacks, we present you a more full stack analysis. So right clicking in the manifest file itself, you will see a dependency analytics report in the, in the bottom option. So clicking over that will bring you some type of window like this. So th and this is our analysis of your full uh, manifest file. So uh, the first tab itself speaks what it does. Security issues, uh, we analyze your full stack and analyze your each dependencies and whether these dependencies contain any vulnerabilities, any CVE information is what we uh, calculate here. So as you can see, this Lodash has some uh, highest CVES score, uh, which uh, is shown in a red, which it means the severity Lodash has, this version has, uh, is very much severe to take uh, to ignore actually. So uh, clicking in the drop down menu, you can see the current version you are using uh, of the Lodash and our recommendation solution. So we recommend you to upgrade this version to 4.17.20. Not only that, we also uh, attach the GitHub stats along with the our presented solution. So that's not all. We also analyze the transitive dependencies of your direct dependencies. So there might be a chance that the dependencies that libmap in this example, further which depends on other transitives has some vulnerabilities. So our solution analyzes that thing also. And so in this particular case, you can see the, uh, the lib map has two transitives, locus and lodash, which has some severe vulnerabilities, which you should, we recommend to take action on. That's one part of our solution. The second part is where we analyze the dependency detail. So here we check mark, three three radio boxes uh, whether this the radio boxes are security usage and license so which check marks fail uh, on a particular of a test is what we marked here so in this particular case you can see severity uh, of the three of the dependencies are marked as a warning sign for you Okay, and then dropping over to the hover, we give you a more detail about that, uh, why we mark this as a warning. So as you can see, you are using this current version and this bootstrap has which version latest in the market is what we show in this latest version section. So it is, we leave it up to you to upgrade your current version to this latest version 
or the version which we recommend you in the first tab that is uh, non severe version uh, whatever you suit suits your needs the best we we leave it up to you so in the third section itself we analyze your licenses of your dependencies that are present in your manifest file and based on that analysis we recommend you what type of license your uh, this project should have been so in this particular case you can see uh, we suggest mit license which is as you know an open source license yeah so that clearly means that all the dependencies uh, you are using uh doesn't has any conflicts and are are very much open source not uh, like the previous case of uh, react facebook whatever you might know right so and uh, last but not the least we have a recommendation models which give companion package recommendations based on your stack what it means is we analyze your stacks and the packages that are most closely matched with your existing package we recommend such packages to you so you can always give us your feedback whether you like our suggestion or not accordingly but that's not all we also integrated with jet brains marketplace we have extension in jet brains Uh, on the similar ground that is a dependency analytics where we do component analysis and your uh, full stack analysis may be coming soon in the near future so in the next uh, our presence that you can expect in the near future is clear integration we integrated with clear to scan the application level of vulnerabilities that are actually present in your docker image we then flag that vulnerabilities and you can uh, motivate it to take actions on on that so last but not the least we have a golang offering which is coming soon so maybe yusuf has already told you we currently support three ecosystems maven pypy and uh, and npm so golang support is what the feature under development it is so yeah more more exciting features may be coming soon in the near future but yeah but last but not the least we need you how you can help us you can help us in joining us in the mission to make the cyber world a more safer place by leveraging our solutions how you can help us by you can pledge you can pledge here by use the due diligence while selecting the dependency for your stack you can help us by raising bugs in our repos by by having a prs in the bug fixes by uh, requesting the feature which you like the most in and want us to integrate with the, our solution with our offerings and last but not the least spreading the word so in the end i would like to hand over to yusuf to take you further yeah before we uh, close on this discussion i would just like to say that uh, all of you present here uh, just rewind your life back a few years where you would have uh, come across such problems where you wouldn't you would not be sure of which package to select from all the google option uh, that the options that google would have suggested you you would not be sure about which versions you to choose how they how they are compatible with each other whether they are um, vulnerable or not all these things we get to know usually once we are done with the development and once it goes for the scanning and we get back the report that the project is good to go ahead or whether there are some problems and there are rectification actions that needs to be taken so the idea of this whole solution that we have right now is to prevent all that and do all those analysis and everything up front during the development time itself as deepak also demoed so we do all these analysis reporting everything as at the same time when you are developing your project or you are doing the active development you don't need to wait 
for some external report to come towards the end of your development cycle to inform you about some problems that you might have um, ingested in the initial phases. So uh, that is all uh, that we wanted to tell, that we wanted to share. With that closing notes, I would say thank you for giving us this opportunity to talk about. And I'm sure you will appreciate our efforts that we have put in for this uh, for this uh, whole extension. And uh, yeah, please do help us in spreading this word and uh, let everybody start using this so that they do not uh, use any vulnerable package or any outdated packages. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you, Deepak and Yusuf. I really like the talk and your analytics platform. Um, so we can wait for a few seconds if anyone has questions. Otherwise, we can wrap it up. All right, so that seems like it. Um, thank you, everyone, for watching this presentation.